Hi all, I'm Fernando Pereira, a professor of computer science at the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil, and today I will talk a bit about how we can use stochastic techniques to perform static analysis. Let me start explaining what is machine learning, because this class is all about it. That has been a rather busy word these days, and you will find plenty of material to learn more about it. We are not really teaching machine learning here, just taking a high-level view of it. Anyway, given this disclaimer, what is machine learning? That's a form of program synthesis, or rather, a technique to synthesize functions based on examples. So we can look into examples of inputs and outputs of these functions, and then we try to come up with a reconstruction of it, of the function, I mean. The input for a machine learning problem, the input for, those, uh, for the algorithm that learns how to synthesize that function are examples. We have a few inputs and, and the corresponding outputs. Let's say that we have n such examples. Each example is a pair formed by an input and an output. This part of the data set that we use to train our model is called the training set. And by looking into this training set, we must try to come up with an approximation of the target function. It does not have to be a perfect approximation. The goal of this approximation is to estimate well the behavior of the function when applied onto unknown inputs. We hope that the function that we synthesize approximates well the unknown outputs. This collection of data where we test the function that we guess is called the test set. But something distinguishes machine learning from typical program synthesis. In the case of machine learning, the synthesis process is essentially statistical. Fact is that we don't try to synthesize the exact function, so approximations of it are acceptable. This exact function might not even exist. Imagine that we try to predict the height of trees as a function of the average daily temperature of the place where the tree is planted, plus the height and perhaps the amount of nitrogen in the soil. You know, um, these things that influence the height of trees. Uh, it's very unlikely that we can come up with an analytical function to describe the height of a tree. We might get a few trees pretty right, but there is always more trees. And it's okay to get a function that just approximates the correct height. We can do much with approximations. So in general, we will have some known inputs that we can use to build a model that predicts the behavior of a known input. We could build a very precise function for the known input, but perhaps this very precise function would not estimate well the unknown data. We would suffer with overfitting. And so sometimes it's better to have a rougher estimate of the known behavior instead of a very precise one. For this rough estimate, we will leave some margin to accept unknown behavior. Anyway, which kind of functions then can we try to infer out of the analysis of known data? There are two families of such, such functions, regression functions and classification functions. In the case of regression, we are trying to reconstruct a numeric function. We have a few data points and we want to find a function that represents the behavior of these data points. In this case, in the case of classification, we are rather interested in assigning the data points to categories. Later on, in the next class, we will see examples of these two kinds of functions in the context of compilers and static analysis. In the meantime, let me explain a bit which kind of properties we might want to predict about code. Let me start with this problem. Given a program, what would be the best sequence of optimizations for it? In this challenge, I have a set of candidate sequences. Given a program, the sequences of optimizations are likely to produce different codes for that program. And we want to find what would be the best sequence that suits that program. 
I could, of course, apply all the sequences and then compare all the optimized programs that I would get, but this is a costly process. The best would be to look into the program and from this analysis infer the best sequence. That would save time, of course, if I'm doing just-in-time compilation. This idea has been tried by John Capasus and Michael Boyle in 2006 in the context of Java. They had some technique to infer for a program the best sequence of optimizations for that program. In this case, the objective function was speed. They were interested in saving compilation time and generating the fastest code. We can use other objective functions. For instance, more recently, Faustino has shown how to find a good optimization sequences to produce smaller binaries. So whereas before we had speed as a target, here we have size. One interesting question is, how can we get the candidate sequences? I mean, we need some sequence of optimizations to define the categories of predictions that we can do. We can think of this candidate sequences as buckets. For each program, then we are interested in placing this program into the bucket that best suits it. As an example here, five sequences proposed by Faustino in that paper. They had a few more sequences. They used some generic algorithm to find them. The sequences are drawn from the set of optimizations available in the LVM compiler. There are many, more than 100 sequences, uh, and we can combine them in many ways, many, uh, more than 100 optimizations, actually. And we can combine them in many ways, sometimes with multiple occurrences of the same optimization. So the problem of determining the sequences themselves is already very interesting. But for that, I'm not giving more details. If you want to know uh, how to find these good candidate sequences, you can read the paper. Something worth mentioning is that some optimizations are synonyms in the sense that they do more or less the same thing. For instance, in register location, we have linear scan and graph coloring. So another interesting problem is to find for each um, program the best optimization for it, giving some optimizations that are synonyms. For instance, like in register location, we have many um, synonyms. Also in instruction scheduling, we have ver several algorithms that do the same thing, more or less the same thing. So here, we don't want a sequence of different optimizations. We want to find for a given problem one optimization among a group of synonyms that suits that program the best. That's another problem that was introduced by John Cavazos in the early 2000s. In that case, he was exactly interested in register location in the context of just-in-time compilation. So given a Java method, is it better to compile that method with linear scan, which is faster but yields worse code, or is it better to compile it with graph coloring, which is slow, um, but however, it yields uh, better code. Notice that in this case, we are not really classifying programs. Um, these two optimizations, linear scan and graph coloring, are uh, intra-procedural. So they apply to functions. I mean, Cavazos would apply his decision procedure to Java methods, not to Java classes. For each method, we take the decision. That's another granularity where we can do predictions. There are indeed many machine learning models to predict properties for functions. For instance, we can predict the best hardware configuration for a given function. That was the subject of this paper. Given a Java method, what would be the best hardware configuration? I mean, number of cores and frequencies to run that function. This problem is interesting because some hardware combine multiple cores, and these cores are not all the same. They are heterogeneous. For instance, consider the old Droid XU4. That's an embedded board manufactured by hard kernel. It contains four so-called B cores. These are fast A15 ARM cores. And then it contains four little cores. These are kind of slow ARM A7 cores. We can use any combination of cores to run a program. A parallel program can benefit from all the eight cores, for instance. And there are multiple frequencies that we can assign to the clusters of big and little cores. For instance, we could use 3B cores at 1.8 GHz and two little cores at 1 GHz. In total, we have a bit more than 3,000 different configurations that we can use for 
any program. And what's interesting is that it makes sense to assign a program to less powerful configurations. For instance, if a program has a lot of synchronization, it makes sense to avoid using the B cores, for there will be more conflicts between the threads. Similarly, if there is a lot of branch misprediction, it also makes sense to prefer the little cores than the B cores, for branch mispredictions are cheaper in the little cores. Anyway, if you want to know um, how we can use stochastic techniques to predict the best configuration for a program, you can take a look into the paper. An important aspect of these techniques is that they require a lot of data to calibrate good models. This data can be programmed, as we saw in the problem of finding the best sequence of optimizations for programs, but it can also be methods of functions like what Kvasas did when he was trying to find the best optimization for a given Java method. Can you think about other kinds of data that we could use? I mean, other granularities of data? Something very common is to predict the behavior of instructions, individual instructions within functions. Can you think about which kind of properties we could try to predict for instructions? Let me show you an example. That's called static prediction of silent stores. A silent store is a store operation that deposits in memory a value that was already there to begin with. How would you go about guessing if a store is likely to be silent or not? Notice that this is a regression problem. We want to guess the probability that a store is silent. It can be silent sometimes, but not always. We want to estimate this frequency anyway. Can you think about how to guess this probability? You can find more about it in this paper. And we will talk a bit more about this kind of approach in the next class. But just to give some spoiler, notice that there are store operations that are more likely to be silent than others. For instance, can you think about situations where this store operation would be silent? It's enough that either B or C be zero and you have a silent store. I mean, assuming that A is a memory location. And we can try to compute the probability that one of these instructions will be zero. And on the other way, uh, can you think about store operations that are very unlikely to be silent? Perhaps operations that will never be silent. Well, they exist. For instance, this operation cannot be silent as we are incrementing a value and then depositing this incremented value where it was stored before. And can you think about other properties that we would like to predict about individual instructions? Something very common in compilers and hardware is to guess the outcome of a branch. That's called branch prediction. And it's done a lot at the hardware level. But we can also do it statically. For instance, when laying out the code for some program, this kind of prediction is very useful. A branch has two possible outcomes. If the condition is true, the program flows to the then part of the branch. But if the condition is false, then the program flows to the else part of the branch. The problem of branch prediction is guessing what will be the most likely outcome of the conditional. Notice that there are two ways to model this problem. The first way is as a classification problem. We want to tag branches as either taken or not taken. Taken means that we believe that the branch will be taken most of the time. Not taken means that we believe that the else part will be executed most of the time. Brad Calder provides a machine learning model that labels branches either taken or not taken, and you can know more about the technique by reading his paper. But what would be the corresponding regression problem? In this case, we might want to predict the probability that a branch is taken. That's the technique that Angelica Morata discussed in her paper. Anyway, with this example, we close the first part of this class of machine learning compilers. Notice that machine learning is ginormous and there is much more about it in computer science. Uh, we are just skimming over the subject and we'll see more of a few more machine learning techniques in the next class, applied, of course, in the domain of compilers and static program analysis.